Hi, welcome back to Spoons and Stuff. As, some, as a lot of you will know, not some of you, quite a lot of you will know, yesterday was the Southern Invert Show in Brighton um, at the Southwick Leisure Centre. If I've got that right, couldn't remember on the way down there. Still can't remember now. <laughs> Who knows? Luckily, I got there. Um, spent the day with Jennifer's Tarantulas and her son Jesse and her mum Carol. We all had a really good day. Manic, absolutely manic day though. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will agree with me. I know a lot of the people I spoke to definitely agreed with me. It was crazy. I mean, I've been to quite a few of the invert shows now and that's definitely the busiest I've been to. But it was weird. The floor layout just seemed wrong. It was like um, all the vendors had loads and loads of space around them, which I, I suppose they need for their stock and that, but the vendors seemed to have too much space and the walkways in between the tables was, it was just chaos because people were trying to get to look at the tables first of all, and they couldn't get there because they were having to fight their way through the people that were already there. Plus if they stood behind them, people then couldn't get through between the aisles and it was just madness. I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of tired and stressed looking people yesterday and it could have been prevented. That's just my opinion, but you know, I think it could have been prevented and it could have been laid out a lot better and it would have been a lot easier for people then as well. But anyway, that's enough of my little rant over. What did we actually get? Um, we'll start with the non-living things. We got uh, three nice big sized pieces of cork bark. These aren't actually for tarantulas, they're for a, uh, my next bioactive crested gecko build if I'm trying to think of the right words but yeah they're actually for that I'm going to do something a little different with the next one so that's what those cork boots are for a um, couple of bags of sphagnum moss again for the gecko build this is actually to go in the substrate uh, we got a little enclosure 20 by 20 by 15 if I'm right from the tarantula room now i've said before but i really do rate these enclosures they've got the little magnetic lid that just snaps on and i think they are quite possibly one of the best enclosures out there i mean i've heard the guy gets a lot of stick and i can't imagine what for because he's building some of the best enclosures you can buy now and i will definitely be getting for more from him in the future uh the other things we picked up we got a selection of air plants for the toad enclosure i still think i need more but this is a start and we also got some little pot plants to uh to use in the tea enclosures in the gecko enclosure however i want to use them i normally see plants pick them up and then use them as i need them i think it's a good way to do it really and especially when you get four like this for a tenner you can't go wrong so on to the living things now I'm, i'll show you in a bit more detail in a bit but i actually picked up two tarantulas from cousin feral ferret uh, we have a thrixopelma prurians who i'm going to move from this setup there's just a tiny little bit of mold in there and i'm not keen on these brass plast tubs stood up the way they are it's just it's just a personal thing there's nothing wrong with the way he set it up i'm not saying that i'm right in any way but uh, I'm just going to move this little one into a setup. I'll give you a close up on the spider when, when I've got it re or when I rehouse it, so you can actually see it a bit better. But this could be interesting because Daniel told me that this one can be a bit flighty, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We also picked up from Daniel again, cousin feral ferret, a youthless or youthless species green femur. Now this is one I'm particularly sort of uh, happy with because these are quite hard to come by and you know the, the fact that Dan was selling these there was no way I was going to pass up the opportunity to be honest with you so again we're going to rehouse this one it's got cocoa fiber in the bottom and as you all know I hate cocoa fiber so I'm going to switch this enclosure up as well give us some peat moss different hide maybe a plant in there some plastic plants whatever but we'll rehouse that little one as well. And the last little one that uh, I got now, I was actually gifted this, and this is quite 
in my opinion, quite a special little tarantula. Now, I ordered one of these from the spider shop earlier in the year. I ordered an adult female and unfortunately it arrived dead. I mean, Sam was great. He, uh, you know, they offered to refund me or give me another spider and that's where I got this girl from, my adult female skeleton leg, the Ephibopolis Murin, I was gonna think of what it was called then. But um, that was the replacement for the adult female of this and I've been looking for these ever since then and they're just so hard to come by. And this one looks like, I mean, it's only about an inch in leg span, but that would probably make it somewhere between a grown on sling and a juvenile. And I suppose I'd better tell you what it is. That would probably help. It's a uh, Sarhydra Arrhenius Raja, the Indian Blue Dwarf. And like I say, I'm just so happy with this one. Now, I was actually gifted this by Jennifer from Jennifer's Tarantulas. And <laughs> this means a lot, not only because it was gifted from her, but because she knows the story of this one as well. And, you know, this is this is like the pride in my collection. This is this is unbelievable. I still can't believe that I've got this little one. I saw them and I was um and ah in about it. And at the end of the day, once I picked everything else up, I didn't actually have enough cash left on me. And so, you know, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> what you've done means a lot to me. It really does. Thank you so much. So we're going to rehouse this one as well because I don't like the little cup and it needs a hide, it needs a water bowl, it needs everything else. So we'll get onto that and uh, get that sorted and get that filmed. Um, so I guess the only thing we can do now is get on with the rehousing and see what we've got. Okay, so on we go with the first first rehouse. We're gonna do Thrixopelma prurians. Now, as I've told, this can be a little bit flighty. I've decided to uh, do it inside this bigger tub just in case it does run i can control the situation a little better um i know it's not going to do it until it's an adult but i've decided to go for a tiny little bioactive setup with this one in the new tarantula room enclosure um we've got a little bit of cork bark a plant and uh we'll see how we get on with that so let's open this enclosure and see what this little one decides to do now i don't know how well you're gonna see this spider it's okay buddy whatever you do don't run right let's get that out of the way hello oh you're pretty i'm not sure how well you're gonna see but that is a gorgeous spider you can just see some of the you may not be able to pick it up on camera, but you can just see some of the greens coming through. So we'll, we'll uh, you know, watch this one develop. Okay, so what we're gonna try and do now is manoeuvre this one into this catch cup first of all. If I take this enclosure out, we'll try and manoeuvre you into the catch cup little one. We'll see how we get on there. Okay, if you come downwards beautiful no oh you're quick okay you are freaking quick this could be fun come on baby no no oh don't do that you little pain in the bum you pain in the bum what are you doing all right come into the cup baby come on there we go we can get the enclosure out of the way now and try and coax this one up into the cup a bit so we can put the new enclosure back down you can't actually see what's going on i realize this and i apologize okay beautiful let's get my fat hand out of the way if you would like to come upwards into this cup please no it's not upwards all right let's try this now come on up you come that's it come upwards baby come on there you go hopefully we'll be able to give you a nice oh my god that's gorgeous you really can see the greens coming through on that 
So we'll just put that into the safety of the pot for two seconds. Get the new enclosure ready and transfer this spider. You are beautiful, I have to say. You are gorgeous. Now, would you like to go straight down into your cork bark for me or straight down into the enclosure? That would be helpful. So we can't do it that way, so we're gonna to have to poke you with the sharp end of the stick, I'm afraid, buddy. I know, I know, I'm sorry, don't run. There you go. Straight down into the cork bark. Considering the speed this thing moves at, I thought it might do a bit more of a runner than that, but uh, you can just about make its back out, back end out there, going down into the cork tube. So, successful rehouse. We'll put the lid on and call that one a day. I've just realised in the last uh, the last rehousing, I didn't actually explain one bit about the enclosure. The Thrixopelma prurians is. Um, considered to be semi-arboreal like similar to the Ockerty so that's why I've given this one it's got a bit of floor space it's got a nice bit of cork bark in there it's got room to wander around the edges of the enclosure so we'll see how it gets on if it's not right we can always switch it up but we'll see so the next one we're going to rehouse is the Euphilus species green femur uh, We'll see how this goes. If this is anything like my Chilensis, it will be a doddle to rehouse. As you know, Homeoma Chilensis was Euphilus species red before it got reclassified. And as this is a Euphilus species, I'm kind of hoping it's gonna be the same, but you never know. So we'll take the lid off. You can just make out the spider if I get my brush. You can just make out this spider down there you can just see the legs and a butt so what we'll do is move those pieces of cork bark out of the way first of all hey you hello got a lovely new home for you yeah do you want to come and have a look see if we can get a bit of a close-up on this spider as well because again this is a lovely pretty little spider that as it gets older, should start to develop some of those greens on it. So, little beautiful girl, hopefully. Would you like to come up into your new enclosure? Or not? Come on. Come on. You're heading the right way, that's it. There you go. You're heading the right way. Well, that was as easy as I was hoping it was going to be. So two six six pardon, two successful rehouses in a row. We're on a roll. The third one could be the really interesting one though. The little garage are blue because, from what I understand, they are lightning quick. So we'll see. But this one was another success, and again another beautiful little tarantula that I'm going to really enjoy watching develop. So. On to the final rehousing, the little Sahydra Aranius Raja, the Indian Blue. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one reacts. I know it's it's obviously Indian, it's old world, it's a dwarf, so chances are it's going to be very quick. But we'll get this lid off and we'll see what we're up against. Hello, hello beautiful. Now you can't quite see the spider at all really <laughs> because it's very well hidden against the substrate but you can just see it there you can see that sort of metallic sheen on its uh, abdomen now as this gets older that will turn the whole spider looks kind of brownish black when it's an adult but as soon as you shine a light on it it goes, uh, it's like some of the discular species, like it goes electric blue and it's got this really, really vivid blue metallic sheen to it. So the enclosure we've got, nice and simple as it's still only a tiny sling, bit of cork bark for a hide, a little bit of plant for decoration, water bowl, and that's about all, all we need for this one at the moment. So, let's try. And get this little one rehoused, see how it goes. Hey, gorgeous. 
Uh, well, you can see what I'm doing. Probably not very well at all because I'm just making a complete mess here. Okay, little one. Let's give you a poke on the bum, see how you react. And you're off. <laughs> okay then. Now, would you like to try that one again and actually go into your enclosure? There it is at the bottom. Just about to do a runner, so I'm going to put a catch cup over the top of it. See if we can't entice it up into it. Get a little bit of paper to put underneath. That'll do. That'll do nicely. So, little skittish one. Let's see if we can't get you on here. Whoops, sorry. I know, I know, I'm not very good at this. Bear with me. Right then. <laughs> the trick is now picking it up and not letting this little one escape while we do it. So, you can see the spider, you can't see anything through my fat arms as usual. But, what I'm going to do is just slowly, no, the other way, look, look, if you go the other way, you'll find there's an enclosure waiting for you. That's it. And it's in. And before it actually tries to run out again, I better put the lid back on. It's just a shame you can't really get a very good picture of this one yet but uh, I shall keep you updated on it as it grows you can stay there little one I don't want you coming out thank you and that's it another successful rehouse no real dramas so uh, I'm slowly getting better with this but that's it job done and we're back uh, if you like that video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and uh again thanks to everyone who come and saw me at the invert show to the new people i've met to the old people i've met just nice to bump into everyone again and i'll see you in the next video